everyone, I'm Kevin with JCR Off-Road. In this video, you're gonna take a quick step back in time to see what I just did to get this installed on our shop JL. So to get started, I kinda of have everything laid out that you should receive with your product. We've got a few different pieces that are gonna assemble as the frame for this table, as well as the table and molly panel platform itself. So that's gonna be two pieces that we can set off to the side as we get started, because we will begin with the assembly of the frame. And then we can get some of this hardware out of the way as well, but we'll go over all that in detail throughout the video. The parts you'll need to start out with to assemble the frame are kind of what you see here. So you have the top logo plate, just kind of this lower cross brace and mount panel, as well as the two side uprights. These are kind of mirrored parts, so you will have a left and a right here. The kind of closed end that you see right here goes toward the top, leaving the open end for the bottom. So you can kind of decipher left and right using that information. And then we'll kind of bolt this all together using the quarter 20 button head of hardware in your bolt pack. You wanna start things off with the four frame components that you see here and kind of get this table frame assembled. So to begin, I'll grab this top kind of logo panel as well as this outside rail. These are somewhat side specific as they do have a closed off end on the top, mostly just for appearance there, leaving the bottom open for hardware access. These you want the logo panel as well as this bottom one when we get to it to slide inside of this rail for a nice clean look here. At this point you'll take one of the quarter 20 button head bolts with a washer and slide it through both components out here and then install one of the serrated flange nuts by reaching around to the inside of this outside upright. That installation is the same on either side as well as this lower panel, so the same quarter 20 hardware. The only thing on this lower panel you need to look out for is kind of the orientation as some of these hole sizes are a little bit different. So the smallest hole in this panel that you see here goes over on the left hand side as you're viewing it in this video. And once you have that figured out, go ahead and install it into each side rail. From there, you just need a 530 seconds hex to tighten things up. You could use an Allen wrench, you could use a bit driver, whatever you have available to you. You should just have to kind of hold the nuts on the backside in here and tighten that up. If for any reason those are spinning and you're having trouble, just grab a 7 16 wrench to hold the nut side. With the frame assembled to this point, we're kind of just gonna set it off to the side for a minute so that we can do a few things over here on the tailgate. We are gonna be using this to kind of mark out some of the holes that you have to drill over there. So there's a few things we're gonna have to come back to later on and install such as the cables and kind of latches for the table and everything once installed. But the reason we're moving forward with it in this configuration is just so those aren't in your way while you're marking out all of those holes. Now, as we get started over here on the tailgate, you're obviously gonna notice that ours already has several holes drilled in it here. Two reasons for that. One, we already had our tailgate molly panel installed on this vehicle once previously, as well as we had to drill the holes to figure out how to build this table during our R&D process so we could show you how it installs. Not to worry, all of these are pretty easy to identify if you do it in the way we're showing you and kind of follow along with this video. So for starters, you're just gonna be removing this upper trim panel in here with kind of the Jeep logo in the center. For that, you can use a screwdriver or ideally a plastic pry tool like I have here. And you're just gonna get behind one end and kind of pry that out. Once you have it started, you can work your way along here with your hands and it should pop free pretty easily. And we'll be drilling the, these two holes that you see here to start with using a couple marks on the back side as our locating points. So again, it is these two holes that we're starting out with here. Now that you have a closer look at this, I can flip it over. And what you're gonna be using to guide you on those hole locations is these two standoffs here, kind of the two round ones toward the center of this panel vertically. And you're gonna take a drill bit and drill a half inch hole right through the center of those. Here I have a step bit or a unibit. These just work really well in this plastic because it can kind of be your pilot hole as well as allow you to gradually step up and make a nice clean hole in this panel. You could achieve the same thing with conventional twist drills, just kind of stepping up 
through multiple sizes until you get to that half inch size. So again, since ours are already drilled, the only thing you really miss out on here is actually seeing us drill the holes in the plastic, but not to worry there, it's pretty easy and straightforward. As long as you've ran a drill and used drill bits in the past, it's easier than any metal surface. So kind of go ahead and get that done and then we can move forward with this. So kind of ignoring these two holes and pretend if you will that you only have these two at this time, you'll then snap this back into place on the tailgate. You should be able to just kind of start the top edge of that and then click it in along the bottom. Now in these hole locations, you're gonna be using two M6 button head bolts along with two half inch by one inch spacers that you see here. We will go over this hardware in a little bit more detail in just a moment. So kind of continue watching and pay attention there as the tailgate itself, where we're gonna be mounting our table frame, does have multiple different bolt hole sizes in these locations. And in turn, we provide a couple different size spacers to go along with that. So again, just continue to follow along and we'll go through all of that just before we install the table frame to the gate. Now with these two spacers, you're gonna be installing them here into the two holes you should have drilled at this time. So one here and one here. Now these two spacers fit pretty snug in here, so we're just gonna leave them in from this point on. Then to get this removed, you can take your plastic pry tool, just get behind one edge on this panel, and you're just gonna work your way around pulling out to release all the plastic clips that hold this in place. With this now removed from the vehicle, we can drill it without any fear of damaging any wiring or anything in the tailgate. So you'll drill this one, this one, and this one to a half inch, this one, and the furthest outside one over here to five eighths, and then come back here and drill this one out to three quarter. That's all just due to the required spacer size and hardware sizes in those locations. With all your holes drilled, you have a couple things to do here on the tailgate before reinstalling that plastic. So first of all, you're gonna have a bolt here as well as here. They are identical, this one's missing at this time, but you'll need an eight millimeter socket to remove those two. And these will not be reused. Next, find this bracket. One side, as you can kind of see here, has a pre-installed nut, the other does not. So you'll install that to the tailgate here in this factory threaded hole. This is kind of the furthest out from the vehicle with the tailgate open. For this, you'll need an M6 button head bolt. This one is roughly one inch long. And much like up top, you'll need a four mil hex for these. Then you just wanna make sure that you get this kind of as parallel as possible to the tailgate itself when tightening it up. With that in place, you can then grab your plastic and snap it back into the tailgate. You can then grab your frame along with those M6 button heads. You'll get this lined up with your spacers and start threading each of those into the tailgate. From here, you'll need a four millimeter hex to tighten these up. You don't have to go crazy with this at this time since we're just kind of using this to mark out our holes and then removing it temporarily. So just kind of snug it to hold this in place for now. At this point, you're using this frame to mark the six remaining holes, so all four along the bottom, as well as these two in the top panel. These are gonna be used for rubber bumpers later on, so ignore these at this time. To mark these, you can use a marker. As long as it reaches far enough through and the hole diameter is large enough, you might struggle with that on a couple of these since they're already held off of the plastic just a little bit, and that's where you can grab a sharp prick punch like I have here. Get that nice and centered up in your hole and then push that back into the plastic. And usually pushing that in and kind of working it around a little bit leaves a nice mark in this plastic material that you can start and kind of center drill your hole with. Once you do get all six of these holes marked out, you can then temporarily remove the two M6 button heads here as well as this frame from the tailgate. And then I'll show you how to remove this plastic. 
Now back to this frame to kind of finish it up before it gets installed to the tailgate. I'm gonna start out with the two rubber bumpers that you see here. They're gonna go in these holes kind of on the top side of the frame. You can add a little bit of lubricant to these to kind of make it easier to install them. Ideally, something like WD-40 or something like that would be fine, and then you just have to wipe off any excess once installed. But they can install without it. You kind of just start one edge, press that down in, as well as kind of rotate it, and then it should snap into place relatively easily. And you can do the same thing on this other side. Next, we'll install the upper latches into the slots here at the top of this frame. So for that, they'll go in in kind of this orientation. And you're gonna need to find the small socket cap screws in your bolt pack. This should be the smallest hardware in your bolt pack. And you're also gonna have nylock nuts to go along with those. So you'll start the bolt kind of from the front side back into the frame. and then reach in behind to install that nut. Now these are slotted vertically to give you a little bit of adjustment here. I'm just gonna kind of center this on the slot for now, but you can always kind of check this once the table's fully assembled and installed and then come back and make adjustments here as needed. To tighten them up, you need a 3 seconds hex and a quarter inch either wrench or socket for the nut on the back side. With both of the bolts tight here, we'll repeat that process with the other latch over on the other side. Next, we'll install the limit cables for the table. They're gonna install using 1024 hardware through the eyelets on the end here and into the side rails. There are two holes on your side rails, so you're gonna use the upper hole. You'll pass the button head through the cable and into this outside frame, and then install a nylock nut here inside of the frame. You'll then need an eighth inch hex and a three eighths wrench to tighten this up. Now in this case, you don't want to just tighten it down and call it done. You wanna kind of work with this a little bit and find a point where it's not rattling, but still is allowed to pivot. So you might have to work at these just a little bit. So that is pretty good there. It's not rattling, it's not moving side to side much, and it is still allowed to pivot. Once you're happy with this, just repeat that process on the other side. At this point, we'll give you a rundown of the spacers and hardware required to install your table frame to the tailgate. We'll start out with the spacers and where they get located up here. I'm gonna kind of call everything out in inches because most of us have an inch increment tape measure. So that makes that kind of easy and straightforward. However, some of this hardware is metric. So just take note of that. Starting in the top left, you're gonna be installing a two inch long by half inch diameter spacer up in that hole location. As there's gonna be a little bit of variation with holes that you mark and drill by hand with kind of every individual install, you may experience what we did up here, which was just a little bit of misalignment between the hole in this panel and the main plastic panel here on our tailgate. If you encounter the same thing and it's kind of preventing you from pushing this spacer in all the way, just go ahead and open up the inside hole a little bit leaving it kind of tight out here as long as it lines up well with your table frame. And that should allow you to get this to pass all the way through here and seat tight against the tailgate. That same thing really goes for any of these holes. If you're experiencing any misalignment in them, you can always open them up just a little bit to give yourself some wiggle room as they're all gonna be covered up by the frame once this thing is fully installed. So a little bit of an oversized hole is not gonna visually affect this product or this install. The remaining three along the top edge are all gonna be the same. So those are one inch long by half inch diameter. And then across the bottom, your left side will be a one and three quarter by half inch diameter, followed by about one and three eighths by five eighths diameter. then a one and three eighths by three quarter diameter. 
And lastly, a 1 and 3 8 by 5 8 diameter out here on the bottom right hand side. Then as for the hardware, we will kind of call these out along the way as we're getting them installed. But just to give you a look at it here, you're gonna have four of the same M6 button head bolts in these four locations. Those are roughly two and an eighth long. The two out here on the left hand side are both five millimeter and one is longer than the other. So take note of that. That's gonna be the top one, roughly two and three quarter long with the bottom being about two and three sixteenths. And then lastly, you're gonna have an M8 button head over here that is the largest of your button head bolts, about two and an eighth inches long. And the final bolt is a quarter 20 button head over here. So that's the only standard thread bolt in your bolt pack for the table mounting at least. And that one's about two inches long. Now that we have all the spacers installed on the gate, we can get our frame bolted into place. So I'm just gonna start out by grabbing the two center M6 bolts for the top, just to kind of balance things out. So we can line our frame up with our spacer holes here and get these started by hand. Then you'll take that long M5 and install it out here followed by another M6 in the top right corner. Then moving to the bottom, again, it's the M5 down here in the bottom left, followed by an M6 right here. The large M8 in this location. and that quarter 20 bolt out here. Now we left all these loose and kind of started them by hand for a little bit of extra compliance to make sure you get everything started easily. Now you can grab a three millimeter hex to tighten the two M5 bolts over here. You'll then need a four mil hex for the four M6 button heads on here. You'll switch to a five mil hex for that larger M8 button head. And lastly, on that quarter 20 bolt, you'll need a 532nd hex. Now you need to come back in with your 532nd hex and actually remove the lowest bolt in each of these kind of outside uprights here. The reason we had you install that earlier on is just to kind of maintain the position of this and keep it lined up while we were marking all of our holes and getting everything else installed. But this is where your kind of lower molly panel portion of your table is gonna bolt in and pivot. So remove these now. Now with this molly panel kind of frame of your table, you want these 90 degree flanges coming up and kind of these openings toward the back. The small holes right here on the end of those flange is where you're gonna be bolting this to the frame. In those locations, again, you're just using a quarter 20 button head with a washer. And then between the table and the frame, you're gonna be installing one of the black nylon washers in here just to kind of help that pivot. I'm gonna kind of loosely install the same hardware combination out here just to help support this so I'm not fighting it wanting to fall right there. Now you're gonna switch away from the two flange lock nuts you had in those locations and find the two flange nylock nuts. These are gonna allow you to kind of tighten it up and put tension on those, but still have it retain that tension and not come loose as the table pivots up and down over time. So you'll slide those up in here and get them started by hand. Now you probably know by now you need a 532nd hex for your quarter inch hardware and then a 7 16 wrench to hold the nut. These are gonna be a lot like the cables up here where you're tightening them enough that this doesn't rattle 
but not so much that it is kind of solid and stiff. You want it to be able to pivot as it goes up and down and gets latched in up here. So take your time when adjusting that, make sure it pivots up and down smoothly without too much resistance and doesn't make any noise when you kind of move it side to side. With your hardware in bolting the table to the frame, you can now secure the cables out here. This is just gonna be the same button head hardware that you used up on this end. You're running the bolt from the outside in with the cable bolted to the inside of this table flange here and then your nylock nut here on the inside. Just like before, you need an eighth inch hex and a three eighths wrench to tighten this up and you wanna leave these a little bit loose so that they can pivot as well. With both of your cables installed, you can now come out to this flange where you're gonna install three quarter 20 by three quarter button heads with washers and flange lock nuts. In this case, you're just gonna be kind of starting these, getting them a couple threads in, and then when your tabletop surface goes in, it's actually got a slotted cutout that is gonna slide down on here, kind of over the bolt and in between the flange here and the nut. Then you can grab your tabletop surface. Here you can now see those slotted cutouts I was mentioning that need to line up with the quarter 20 bolts. And then on the kind of inside edge, you're gonna see three of these slightly raised tabs. Those are gonna line up with cutouts on the molly panel section of your table. So you'll start by getting those lined up in here. You can reach through the molly panel side and press up on that if needed to kind of help out with that alignment. With the three tabs at least started back here, you'll then start by pressing in on this front edge of the table to hopefully get that pushed back far enough that it drops down in and lines up with your bolts out here. If you're having any trouble at all with that alignment, just grab a small flat screwdriver, stick it down in the slots here and very lightly pry this back. That should be enough that it lets you drop the table down in so you can tighten up your button head hardware here. When tightening these, you can reach through those molly panel holes and one hold the nut to prevent it from spinning, but also lift up ever so slightly on the table to kind of make it a nice transition on the radius here to this flange and so that you're not catching a hard edge on the flange there. And then again, grab your 5 30 seconds and tighten these up. From here, you can flip the table up to check the function, making sure your cables pop down and in. And then with it all the way up, check that you can pull these latches down and secure them without too much effort. From here, if your table functions smoothly, your installation is complete. A couple things to note, if you do seem to have any issues there, you might just have to go back and make some minor adjustments, again, to things like these latches and such that we talked about earlier on. Another thing we want to touch on, since this table does use a shared bolt pack from a couple other products that we offer here at JCR, you may wind up with a couple extra bolts and washers and things along the way. So as long as you followed closely with the video, don't worry about those. And then as always, if you do have any questions at all about this installation or anything else we offer here at JCR Off-Road, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always email us at info at jcroffroad.com or call us at 269-353-1184.